the days of castles and kings, the birds listened when Vetus Bach played his sitter. Vetus taught his son Hans to play the violin, and Hans taught his son Christoph to play the violin. Then Christoph taught his son Ambrosius to play the violin. And when Ambrosius' son Sebastian was born, the birds sang a welcome. The musical box came from far and wide to greet Sebastian. Fiddles played, voices sang out, the birds listened. Even the duke in the palace on the hill listened. Ambrosius taught his son Sebastian to play the violin. All the Bachs played music. When Sebastian was nine, the music stopped. First his mama, then his papa died. Sebastian was an orphan. He went off to live with his older brother Christoph. Even the birds' songs could not cheer Sebastian. But when Christoph taught his little brother to play the clavichord, the music sounded again. Sebastian practiced from morning till night. By moonlight, he copied music to play the next day. It was a good way to learn, and he wanted to learn everything. So when Sebastian was 15, he set off for boarding school on foot. 200 miles away. Sebastian walked and walked and walked. He slept in haylofts, played for pennies in taverns, and played for himself in the starlight. Away at school, Sebastian learned to play the organ. From the start, Sebastian loved this instrument. His feet playing the pedals, his hands on the keyboard, pulling the stops, and above all, the mighty sound that roared from the pipes. Sebastian walked miles to hear other organists play. Back and forth across the land, from one church to the next, he walked, the sound of organ pipes ringing in his ears. So it went at school playing organ, violin, harpsichord, and singing in the choir. Then one day, Sebastian put on a wig, for young men did that in those days, and left school to make his way in the world. From one church to another, from one palace to another, Sebastian played music, but now it was his own music. Sebastian heard the music in his head. The melodies came fast. As his pen raced over the page, he rarely changed a note. He heard one melody for the violin, one for the trumpet, one for the flute, and one for the oboe. Each instrument had its own voice, and when all the voices sounded at the same time, it was like good friends talking together. Sebastian nodded to the flute, tapped his foot to the trumpet, lifted a finger to the violin, helping the instruments play together, all the while playing his own part too. The music he heard in his head came to life all around him. Sebastian played his music for princes and dukes in their palaces. But sometimes it was a hard life. Once, a duke locked Sebastian in a jail cell for one long month because he had not asked permission to change jobs. Rulers did that in those days. Even as Sebastian sat behind bars, he heard his own music and wrote it down. 
The years passed. Sebastian became a loving husband to Anna Magdalena and a proud papa of 20 children. More and more wagons and carriages were needed to move the Bach family from town to town. Finally, the growing family settled down behind the walls of the city of Leipzig. The Bachs lived in a big house close by the church where Sebastian was music director. The Bachs shared the big house with students at the church school where Sebastian was choir master. Sebastian worked hard to provide for his family. His days were spent teaching unruly boys their music and Latin, and his nights composing music for the Sunday services, five hours long. Every Sunday morning, Sebastian's music filled the church but even his stern glance could not still fidgety choir boys during the long morning service. The Bach house was as busy as a beehive. There were instruments everywhere, under tables, on top of chairs, with hardly a place for a visitor to sit down. Anna Magdalena treasured the notebook Sebastian made for her, filled with his music and poems. At night, after the last goblet had been washed, the whole family played music from Anna's notebook. When the moon was high in the sky and all the children asleep, new music filled Sebastian's head. He wrote and wrote, until the candles burned low as the sun came up. Before the city was awake, Sebastian went to the organ and played his new music. His hands and feet flew over the keys and pedals. The music filled the church like thunder. Angels listened. And kings and queens listened. Sebastian's music echoed in the streets of Leipzig. As Sebastian grew old, the light faded from his eyes until he could not see. But still, the music kept coming. He composed one last piece as he took his final breath. Now, Sebastian sings in the choir of angels and listens as if his music fills the world across the mountains and valleys and oceans and into the heavens and maybe even far out beyond the farthest star. The first Voyager spacecraft was launched in 1977. On the spacecraft, there is a recording of sounds from Earth. Should the spacecraft encounter any life beyond our galaxy, the first sound that will be heard is the music of Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> 